So let's now look at how to sketch exponential equations. So looking at how to sketch equations like y equals 2 to the x or y equals 3 to the x. So the first thing we would like to do is look at the uh, y-intercept. So we just take x equal to 0. Let's just look at y equals 2 to the x first. So if we look at x equals 0, then we get y equals 2 to the 0 and so that'll be 1 so we have a y-intercept of 1 and let's try to find the x-intercept so we need to find a value of x such that 2 to the x equals 0 so if we try to do this let's see well x equals 0 doesn't work because 2 to the 0 is 1 2 to the 1 is 2 so that doesn't work we can try 2 squared, that doesn't work, we get 4. And we also notice that as x increases, 2 to the x increases. So maybe let's try something negative, let's try 2 to the negative 1. Well, by index laws, that's just 1 half, and that's greater than or equal to, that's greater than 0 as well. So what, what we'll find is that 2 to the power of x is always positive. So 2 to the x is greater than 0 uh, for all x. So there isn't, in fact, a, an x-intercept. We'll have an asymptote along the x-axis at y equals 0. And the general shape of the graph will be something like this. And we can see that from direct calculations. So Let's, let's continue just plotting points to see what we find. So 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So that's about here. So this point will be 2. Then if we look at, so that's x equals 1, x equals 2. 2 squared is 4. And so that's this point. And... 2 cubed is 8, so by the time we get up here, we're already at about a y value of 8. So it, it becomes very, very steep very quickly, and that's the characteristic of an exponential graph. So these graphs are very steep. Okay, so let's look at another example. Sketch the graph of y equals 3 to the x. Well, nothing really in the previous example depended on the fact that we used 2. If we look at y equals 3x, almost the same thing happens. We see that y, if we look at the y-intercept, y equals 3 to the 0, that's still 1. So I'll have a 1 here. 3 to the x is, is positive, just like in the 2 to the x case. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And the uh, same general trend occurs. Now just to compare it to the previous example, this grows quicker than y equals 2 to the x. So y equals 2 to the x will look something like this. And for example, if we wanted to do y equals 4 to the x, then that would be something like this. So the bigger this number, the steeper the graph is. The, the bigger the base, the steeper the graph, but the general trend is still the same. Okay, let's look at something more complicated. So here we have y equals 3 to the x plus 1. And so we know what the graph of y equals 3 to the x looks like. And this plus 1 just shifts every y value up. So shifts every y value up by 1. And we call this a vertical translation. OK, so the, y as the horizontal asymptote was originally at x equals 0 for y equals 3 to the x. But that's now shifted up to be y equals 1. 
recall that it was originally at y equals 0. The y-intercept was originally at 1, but now that's going to be 2. And then we just draw the same curve again. And that's it for that example. Okay, here we have something a little more challenging. Sketch the graph of y equals 2, x minus 1, minus 2. Okay, so what we'll do first is sketch y equals 3 to the x. So that's this graph. That's a 1. This is y equals 0. So that's y equals 3 to the x. Next we'll sketch y is equal to 3 to the power of 2x and that's just going to force everything to grow a bit quicker. So this 2 is a dilation from the y-axis. And so the resulting graph that we'll get is maybe not that steep, but something like this. So this is 3 to the 2x. Okay, now we want to look at what this 1 does. And to figure that out, we need to factor out this 2. And we get 2x minus 1 half. And this is a horizontal shift, or a horizontal translation. And it will, in fact, because this is a negative, uh, be to the right. So what we find is that we now move this green graph to the right a little bit. And this y-intercept will change. So if we look at, the, we can't actually compute this y-intercept yet because we haven't touched logarithms, but I'll record another video where we actually do calculate the y-intercept since we will know logarithms by then. And the final thing is just to do this uh, vertical shift, so vertical translation. I'll also do a tutorial on understanding all of these uh, graphical transformations in detail. And so the final curve that we'll get will be that we move this down by 2. So this is y equals minus 2. And then it'll be something of this form. So this is our 3, 2x minus 1, minus 2. And let's just erase these graphs for the moment. And this is roughly the sketch that we'll get. Now we would need to calculate this x-intercept here. And we can do that by setting y equal to zero, but we would still need logarithms. So I'll cover logarithms in the next uh, video. And after we understand logarithms, we can begin to calculate these x and y-intercepts for these graphs. The main point is to understand, uh, firstly, the general trend. So the general shape of these curves is of uh, this form. The bigger the base, the steeper the curve. And that if I have a plus one here or a minus one, this corresponds to a vertical shift. So regardless of what this is, this corresponds to a dilation, this factor in front of the x here, and this factor here subtracted from the x or added to the x 
that corresponds to a horizontal translation. We'll cover that more in later videos.